Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat and we would look at the net operating losses under the CARES Act or what I'm going to call them is are the COVID rule. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,900 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them. At farhatlectures.com, what I do is I help people, either whether they are taking an accounting course or studying for the CPA exam. I don't replace your Becker. I don't replace your Roger. I don't replace your Wiley or Glime or Sergeant account. What I do is I supplement. I'll give you detailed explanation about the topics that you're studying for, plus obviously exercises such as multiple choice through false and exercises to help you prepare for those courses. So I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com, if you are a CPA candidate. Let's take a look at the current rules or the permanent rules. Basically, those rules apply to tax year 2021 and forward. And those are basically the old rules. You can only have a carry forward for any net operating losses. And you can carry those net operating losses indefinitely. You are subject to 80% limitation of the taxable income before NOL. And there's a, there's a separate recording. If you're interested, go to my website and you will see the old rules. So this is this these are the old rules. The reason I put them here, just to remind you that in 2021, you have to go back and know the old rules. But for now, I have to teach you the CARES Act, the NOL CARES Act. NOL, it will apply. The new rules will apply to 2018, 2019, and 2020. Hold on a second. Did you say 2018? We're already in 2020. Yes. If you have any NOL in 2018, you could go back and file an amended return and use the new rules. So what are the new rules? The new rules is you can carry back your NOL five years, starting with the oldest year, and, and whatever remaining, you can carry them forward. Now, if you are not familiar with what happened with the pre President Trump, this is what happened in 2008, 2009. When the financial crisis hit, this is kind of, I'm going on a tangent, kind of to make this a little bit more interesting. When the financial um, crisis hit, President Obama changed the NOL. The NOL used to be, this is like the old, old, old rules, used to be, you can go back two years and you can go forward 20 years. This is the old, old rules. So don't even, you know, don't even think about this, okay? So what happened when President Trump came, he made an exception for 2008 and 2009. And for those two years, you can, they allow you to go back five years. And what happened now, President Trump now, back then, President Trump, the businessman, what he did, he went back and he amended his return and he got a refund of $70 million because he was able, he, he took a large loss in 2009, I believe. Yes, in 2009, he took a large loss of $700 million, and he went back and he claimed $70 million in refund. He got the refund. And this is the refund that's under audit that you hear about always in the news. I'm not going to keep talking about this. If you're interested, I have a... Um, I have a YouTube, like 20 minute YouTube explaining this. So you can go to my YouTube channel. So the other thing you want to know about the COVID rules, they are not subject to 80% limitation. So you can go back and offset all of your taxable income, not only 80%. And uh, if you carry back to any years prior to 2018, what's going to happen is prior to 2018, the tax rate was higher than 21. So it could be 35 or any applicable rate. So whatever that rate was in that year, you will you will file your amended return or your refund to get based on that tax rate, not 21%. So basically, the tax effect of any realizable loss carry back will, will show on your income statement and your current income. You might have a refund that's going to show on the balance sheet as a current asset. And any remaining losses, if you have any remaining losses after you use the carry back, you're going to have them as the third taxed asset and all the third taxed asset are non Current. Now, the best way to illustrate all these concepts is to work an example. Let's go ahead and do so. Adam's company financial and taxable income were the same in the following years. So we have 2017 income, taxable income of 20,000. Adam paid 20, 35%. So Adam paid 7,000 in 2018. 30,000 times 21%. Adam's corporation pays 6,300. And we are dealing with 2019. In 2019, Adams had an NOL of 120,000 and in 2020 they expect 20,000 in income and 2021 and beyond they expect to have no 
taxable income. So what's going to happen under the new rules? Well, let's talk about the old rules first. Under the old rules, what's going to happen is we're going to take this 120,000 and we're going to only look forward and carry it as the third taxed asset for the next whatever years. Now what we can do, on the contrary, now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to first go back to 2017 claim a refund of 7000 go back to 2018 claim a refund of 6300 and this is what's going to happen we're going to go back claim a refund 7000 6300 we're going to get a refund of 13300 so we're going to debit income tax refund receivable 13300 and what you credit is income tax benefit but i'm not going to credit income i'm going to put the credit here income tax benefit you're going to see why I am not going to do that now, but the credit is, if that's all what you have, you credit income tax benefit, whoops, 13,300. That would have been the entry if that's all what we have, if that's all what we have to do. But we're going to have to do a little bit more of work here, and you're going to see why, because we did not use all the NOL, okay, and notice after 2020, we're going to have zero income. So we have more work to do, but this is the first debit and credit, but again, this is not going to be the final credit for income tax benefit. So here, here's what happened. We, of the 120,000 NOL, let's make it negative, NOL, for 20, we're able to reduce 20, uh, 2017, 20,000, and we have remaining NOL of 100,000. Then this is for 2017. For 2018, we used up $30,000 of this NOL for 2018. As a result, we still have 50,000 of NOL. Well, this NOL, it's gonna be carried forward and this is gonna create, hopefully you know this, a deferred taxed asset based on the future tax rate of 21%. So if we take 21% times 50,000, we're gonna have a deferred taxed asset of 14,700. And basically, this is what's going to happen. We're going to have a deferred taxed asset of 14,700. This is the same computation here. So this is the second debit, 14,700. Now, also, what we would have done credit income tax benefit, 14,700. So again, we would have do is credit income tax benefit, 14,700. But that's not the end of the story. Here's what we are told here. We are told in this problem, problem and you have to be very careful this could be given to you in a form of a simulation you're going to be told here that after 2021 they don't expect any income whoa 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 hold on a second this is going to create a problem for me what what's that problem the problem is i have a deferred tax asset of 14700 and i'm not going to realize it i'm not going to be able to use it why not well, why not is they're telling me there is no income. It means I have to create a valuation account. So what does that mean? It means I had, let me go back to my pen here. I had, uh, I have a total of 70,000 remaining. Remember I had the uh, 20, 100, I'm sorry, I had, I apologize. This number is not 50, this number is 70,000, I apologize. So 70,000 times 21 will give you 14,700. So I have NOL of 70,000, and I'm gonna only be able to use of that NOL, the 2020 projected income of 20,000. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have an NOL, sorry, this is the 50,000. I'm gonna have unused, unused NOL of $50,000. Well, unused NOL, that's gonna that's gonna ask me to create a a tax valuation account. So I'm gonna take this fifty thousand multiplied by twenty one percent, and as a result, I'm gonna have let's show it here. So I'm gonna have fifty thousand times twenty one percent. So I'm gonna have a deferred taxed asset allowance of ten thousand five hundred. Simply put, I'm going to credit deferred taxed allowance, and as a result, I'm gonna have to reduce. You know, income tax benefit, specifically, if you want to be more specific, I have to reduce this one. I have to reduce this income tax benefit by 10,500. So I have to reduce this income tax benefit, basically debit. So simply put, the entry will be, so the entry by itself would look something like this. You debit the deferred tax allowance and you credit income. I'm sorry. Yes, you debit income tax benefit. The debit should be first, but that's that's not the point here so simply put i have to reduce this account by 14700 if i reduce it it's going to give me 4200 
Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to combine those two in one entry as income tax benefit of 17500 Okay, so this is why I did not give you the debit and the credit initially because I because at the end, I know it's going to look different. So this is the ending of the income tax benefit, 17500 So this is the journal entry. Now, we want to see where everything goes on the financial statements. What does that mean? It means how how is how things are presented on the income statement because on the CPA exam they ask a lot of questions about that. So the first thing is the income statement. On the income statement, I'm going to show thirteen thousand three hundred for the refund, and for the from the deferred taxed asset, I'm going to have four thousand two hundred. You remember this number seventeen thousand five hundred, thirteen thousand three hundred, and four thousand two hundred. And you should know how we came up with this. So this is the current, the current portion and this is the the third portion here, here they are current deferred okay that's that now on the balance sheet i need to show my income tax refund which should be a, a current asset hopefully it's a current because you want it as soon as possible within a year under non-current assets you're going to have the third tax asset of 14,700 less the allowance so this is less remember i put the less here so the net the third tax asset is 4,200 which is also showing on the income statement so this basically a question like this simply put a question like this on the cpa exam i can ask you really 10 multiple 10 i could ask you 10 different multiple choice questions i can ask you for example what is the uh, uh, current portion of income what's the deferred portion of income uh, what is the current assets as a result of the, uh, as a result of the nol i can t ask you what is the non-current asset 4,200 net. I could ask you, what is the deferred tax asset gross? 14,700. So I can ask you so many different questions or I can show you to tell me where, what's the what journal entry goes. I can ac actually ask you, not 10, I can ask you 15 multiple, different 15 multiple choice questions. So that's why you have to understand everything. Also, I can give you a problem like this in a form of a simulation. Why not? I can, you know, I can give you this information and ask you to put the journal entry. And that's basically a simulation. Hopefully, you'll get something like this. That's an easy simulation once you really know it. As always, I'm going to remind you to visit farhatlectures.com, especially if you're studying for your CPA exam. Why? Why? Your CPA is a lifetime investment. It's going to pay dividend for you in the next 30 to 40 years. Don't shortchange yourself. Invest in your education. Invest in your CPA. Once you're a CPA... You would recoup all the, what you, if, if, if you consider this an expenditure, you would recoup all your expenditure plus more. So it's a great investment in your career. I'm always here to help you. Study hard, good luck, and most importantly, stay safe. Look, if the president got infected, we are all under risk, serious risk. Good luck and study hard.